Now, here he is, your friend and his, Henny Youngman. Oh, that Henny Youngman. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so happy to be here tonight, even at this salary. <laughs> Two gamblers coming out of church. One says, look, it's hallelujah, not hialeah. <laughs> A drunk walks up to a parking meter, puts a dime in, the arrow goes to 60. He says, yeah, I lost 100 pounds. <laughs> Say, a drunk is brought into court. The judge says, my good man, you've been brought here for drinking. He says, all right, judge, let's get started. <laughs> Two drunks walking along Broadway on New Year's Eve. One goes down the subway by mistake. He comes up to the other entrance. His friend is waiting for him. He says, where were you? Come to some guy's basement. Has he got a set of trains? <laughs> A stockbroker calls up a client and says, look, there's a new stock on the market called State Gallery United. Ten cents a share. I think you ought to buy some. He says, all right, pick me up 20,000 shares. We'll have a little fun. The next day, the stock goes up to a dollar. He says, you want to sell it? He says, oh, no, give me 20,000 more shares. Goes up to three dollars. Give me 20,000 more shares. Goes up to five dollars. Give me 27 dollars. Give me nine dollars. He says, sell me out at nine dollars. He says, to who? <laughs> says, a man loses a lot of money in Las Vegas. He's driving out of town. He is fed up. From out of the mountains, he hears a voice say, Go back to Las Vegas. Go back to Las Vegas. Well, he figured this is a good omen. He turns around, he drives back 80 miles an hour. He gets to Vegas, the voice says, Go into Caesar's Palace and gamble this time. So he goes in Caesar's Palace. The voice says, Play roulette. Put $2,000 on red. He does that. Black comes up. He loses. The voice says, How about that? <laughs> So I'd like to talk about my brother-in-law. I got a brother-in-law who's a karate expert. Join the army. First time he saluted, he killed himself. <laughs> I got one brother-in-law. I wish he would learn a trade so he'd know what kind of work he's out of. <laughs> he gets the funniest jobs. Last year he was a lifeguard in a car wash. <laughs> Tells people he's a diamond cutter. Diamond cutter. Mows the lawn at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Always on a diet. Say, my wife got a new diet now. Coconuts and bananas. She hasn't lost any weight, but can she climb a tree? <laughs> she said she was a light eater. That's right. As soon as it's light, she starts to eat. <laughs> She's tried metricol, safflower oil. Now she eats nothing but Limburger cheese and garlic. You can't get near her, so but distance, she looks thinner. <laughs> my wife went to the beauty parlor. She got a mud pack. For two days, she looked nice. Then the mud fell off. <laughs> she puts that cold cream all over her face. She says, kiss me. I said, take me to your leader. <laughs> That's the way she looks in the morning. She ran after the garbage man. Am I too late for the garbage? She says, no, jump in. <laughs> Two people get married. They're married for 20 years. All of a sudden, he says, honey, I want to admit something to you after 20 years. I have asthma. She says, asthma for 20 years, I thought you were hissing me. <laughs> I found a girl having fun. She said, quick, hide my boyfriend. He says, where's the back door? She says, we haven't got a back door. He says, where would you like one? <laughs> back to the barbecue, folks. Now, folks, if your fire won't start fast enough, there are several different types of liquid fire starters. These are about as safe to use as nitroglycerine and the destruction derby. <laughs> the two problems that can bug you are one, your steak can taste like paint thinner, and number two, you can get yourself barbecued instead of the steak. <laughs> Remember years ago when a barber used to give you a singe? Liquid fire starter will do the same thing for you. <laughs> now when you finally get your fire started and you have a nice bed of great coals, you are ready to cook. Be sure you have plenty of water handy so in case fat makes the fire flare up, you can douse it. It's also good when your friends start giving you advice. You can douse them. <laughs> now, folks, once you start to cook, the thrilling part of grilling begins. There's an old song that goes, when your heart's on fire, smoke gets in your eyes. In barbecuing, smoke gets in your eyes when your meat's on fire. <laughs> now, one of the most important things to know about barbecuing is that all meat should be marinated. There are a lot of excellent marinades you can buy. Forget them. Now, about a half hour before you'll be cooking, drink a pint of scotch. That's all. Drink it. 
You'll either be too polluted to barbecue at all or so high you won't care what happens. <laughs> In most cases, it's best to give the guests the same marinade. This makes any barbecue a success. <laughs> now, some barbecuers always try to place their grill over a plot of grass rather than a plot of sand. If you drop your steak before saving it and it falls on the grass, save it anyway. It looks like spinach. <laughs> now, if you drop it in the sand, it tastes like spinach. <laughs> Now be careful, folks, not to start your barbecue fire too close to trees, shrubbery, or to the house. If Mrs. O'Leary hadn't been to grilling hamburgers so near a barn full of hay, her cow couldn't have kicked over the grill and started the Chicago fire. <laughs> now always remember this, there's nothing more fun than cooking and eating out of doors unless you'd rather be comfortable. <laughs> now, everybody's had any experience planting barbecues knows one thing, it might rain. And they all agree there's just one thing you can do about it. Let it. <laughs> Now, smoke generally keeps the bugs away from a barbecue, but if mosquitoes start eating you up, go indoors and let them eat the steak. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, how do you become a comedian? Well, it's simple, folks. You get a lot of jokes together, you tell them to your friends, you keep the good ones. Now, before you know it, you are a riot. Everybody wants you in the home for parties, Weddings, everything. You get free meals. Everybody makes a fuss over you. Now, if somebody tells you you ought to go on a stage like an idiot, you believe this. Now, to go on a stage, you must learn how to speak clearly. You go to diction school. They fill your mouth with marbles, and you are supposed to talk clearly right through the marbles. Now, every day you lose a marble. When you've lost all your marbles... <laughs> I just found a labor-saving device, a rich old lady. <laughs> a drunk walks into an elevator shaft. He falls down ten flights. He's lying there bleeding. He says, I said, up! <laughs> you know, a father was explaining ethics to his son, who was about to go into business. He says, suppose a woman comes in and orders $100 worth of material. You wrap it up and you give it to her. Now, she pays you with a $100 bill. As she goes out the door, you realize she's giving you two $100 bills. Now, here's where the ethics come in. Should you or shouldn't you tell your partner? <laughs> <laughs> they have a new thing now called Nicotine Anonymous. It's for people who want to stop smoking. When you feel a craving for a cigarette, you simply call up another member, he comes over and you get drunk together. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the next scene, we see a couple that have been married for 20 years. He says to her, honey, let's go on a vacation. As he says this, he looks in the next room where he sees a little old lady knitting. He said, darling, if you don't mind, let's go this time without your mother. She said, my mother? I thought it was your mother. <laughs> Folks, I got a wonderful doctor. If you can't afford the operation, he touches up the x-rays. <laughs> my arm hurt. I went to the doctor. I said, doctor, it hurts when I lift my arm like this. He said, don't do that. <laughs> I said, doctor, it hurts. He pulled down a medical book. He studied 20 minutes. He said, you ever had that pain before? I said, yes. He said, well, he got it again. <laughs> Incidentally, folks, if any of you people meet me at the racetrack, please don't give me any more tips on horses. I played a horse so slow the jockey kept a diary of the trip. <laughs> some people play a horse to win, some to play, so you should have bet the horse to live. <laughs> the jockey hit the horse, the horse turned around, he said, what are you hitting me for? There's nobody behind us. <laughs> That's the first time I ever saw a horse start from a kneeling position. <laughs> I don't mind when the horse is left at the post. I don't mind when the horse comes up to me in the grandstand and asks, which way do they go? When I see the horse, I bet on it, the $2 win, to play another horse in the same race. <laughs> Before I go, folks, I have a message for all you parents. Is your teenage son or daughter out for the evening? If so, take advantage of the opportunity. Pack your furniture, call the movie man, and don't leave a forwarding address. <laughs> Say, you want to have some real laughs, folks? Send a telegram saying, ignore first wire. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never had a penny to my name, so I changed my name. <laughs> my wife's always asking for money, complained a friend of ours. Last week she wanted $200, the day before yesterday she asked me for $125, and this morning she wanted $150. He said, that's crazy. What does she do with it all? She said, I don't know, I never give her any. <laughs> <laughs> you, know Jack the you know Jack the Ripper was never killed. He's doing my laundry. <laughs> See, I'll tell you how to beat the gambling in Las Vegas. When you get off the airplane, walk right into the propeller. <laughs> Say, folks, you know what it means to come home at night to a woman 
who'll give you a little love, a little affection, a little tenderness. It means you're in the wrong house. That's what it means. <laughs> you know, one thing I like about the beast is nothing like getting up at six in the morning, putting on your bathing suit, jumping in the ocean, swimming out five or six miles and then swimming back. There's nothing like it, so I do it. <laughs> a fellow walked up to me and said, stick him down. I said, you mean stick him up? He's no wonder I've made any money. <laughs> Says a new perfume out which drives women crazy. It smells like money. It's called Filthy Luca 5. <laughs> so I came home last night by accident. There's the car in the dining room. I said to my wife, how did you get the car in here? She said, it was easy. I made a left turn when I came out of the kitchen. <laughs> says a man, 75 years old, he's reading in his hotel room when he hears a knock on the door and a beautiful girl says, I'm sorry, I must be in the wrong room. He says, you got the right room, but you're 40 years too late. <laughs> said, you hear about the nearsighted snake who fell in love with a piece of rope? <laughs> Say, my wife put her hand out the window while she was driving. She signaled right, then left, then she erased it. I said, what kind of a signal is that? She said, I want to go right, and I want to go left, and I changed my mind. I rubbed it out. <laughs> Say, you want to get your boot black crazy? Next time you're going for a shine, wear one black shoe and one brown one. <laughs> Say, I had a fire in a hotel in Miami Beach. A woman shouted, help, fire! Cha-cha-cha! <laughs> Say, we have a Volkswagen with four gears. The fourth gear is for going through Jewish neighborhoods. <laughs> when I was a kid, I had no watch. I used to tell time with my fiddle. I used to practice in the middle of the night, and the neighbors would shout, find time to practice, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I love this town. I have a lovely hotel room and bath. A little inconvenient. They're in two different buildings. <laughs> You know, I'm always a gentleman in the subway. Whenever I see an empty seat, I point it out to a lady, then I race her for it. <laughs> say, say the other day, a friend of mine walked into a cigar store. She said to the sales girl, I'd like to buy a carton of cigarettes. The sales girl smiled and said, there are so many brands, which one would you like? My friend thought for a moment, then mentioned a particular brand whereupon the following conversation took place. Do you want the soft pack or the crush fruit box? Soft pack, king size or regular? King size. Filter tip or plain? Filter tip. Menthol or mint? Menthol. Cash or carry? Forget it, I've broken a habit. <laughs> Say, doctors are just worried about their public image nowadays. I don't wonder why. A few weeks ago, a doctor friend of mine had trouble with his plumbing. The pipes in his bathroom began to leak. The leak became bigger and bigger. Even though it was 2 o'clock in the morning, the doctor decided to phone his plumber. Naturally, the plumber got sore being awakened at that hour of the morning. For peace sake, Dr. Well, this is some time to wake a guy. He said, you, you've never hesitated to call me in the middle of the night with a medical problem. Now it just happens I've got a plumbing emergency. There was a moment's silence. The plumber spoke up. Right you are, Doc. Tell me what's wrong. The doctor explained about the leak in the bathroom. The plumber said, I'll tell you what to do. Take two aspirins every four hours, drop them down the pipe. If the leak hasn't cleared up by morning, phone me at the office. <laughs> you know, I'm so nearsighted I can't even see my contact lenses. <laughs> you know, folks, I flew my own plane for two years, then the rubber band broke. <laughs> you know, I don't know what to get my wife anymore. First she wanted a mink, I got her a mink. Then she wanted a silver fox, I got her a silver fox. It's ridiculous, the house is full of animals. <laughs> Say, everybody's on strike nowadays. I saw a guy carrying a sign with nothing on it. I said, who are you picking me against? I said, nobody, I'm looking for a sponsor. <laughs> Say, my wife was learning how to drive. When the road times when she does, it's a coincidence. <laughs> Last night, I ordered a whole meal in French, and even the waiter was surprised. It was a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> I said to my mother-in-law, my house is your house. Last week, she sold it. <laughs> Two kangaroos were talking to each other. One said, gee, I hope it don't rain today. I just hate it when the children play inside. <laughs> <laughs> Say, things are rough and people are worried. I saw a man lying in the gutter. I said, are you sick? Can I help you? He says, no, I found a parking place. I sent my wife to buy a car. <laughs> Folks, last week, my wife and I were married 40 years and we went back to the same hotel where we got married in Chicago. Had the same suite of rooms. Only this time I went in the bathroom and cried. 
<laughs> I played a hotel in Chicago where they had a line of chorus girls. They used to dress in one room, and I used to dress in the next room. And there was a little hole in the wall. I let them look. <laughs> Couple in Hollywood got divorced, then they got remarried. The divorce didn't work out. <laughs> I love Hollywood. I go there every year to attend Sasha Gabor's weddings. <laughs> She's been married so many times, she has rice marks on her face. <laughs> Martha Ray's been married seven times, she has a wash and wear bridal gown. <laughs> Martha Ray kissed me, I lost my head completely. <laughs> I picture this, Martha Ray's making a picture, she's taking a shower bath. She hears the doorbell ring, she says, who's there? He says, blind man. She runs out, opens the door, the man says, where shall I put these blinds, lady? <laughs> There was a girl banging on my hotel room door all night. I finally had to let her out of the room. <laughs> I don't want to say my room was small. I put the key in the keyhole. I broke the window. <laughs> this hotel was so elegant, room service had an unlisted number. <laughs> I called on and said, is this room service? She said, yes, I sent up a room. <laughs> I walked in my room, there's a strange girl. I said to her, I'll give you just 48 hours to get out of here. <laughs> She said to me, braggart. <laughs> There's a man going to the electric chair. The warden says, you can have anything you want to eat, anything you desire. So he said, I want mushrooms. He says, mushrooms? Yeah, I was always afraid to eat them. <laughs> no business is so bad in the nightclub I worked in last week. The orchestra was playing tea for one. <laughs> When you're down and out, lift up your head and shout, Help! <laughs> Say, folks, have you tried vodka and carrot juice? You get drunk just as fast, but your eyesight gets better. <laughs> My father was a town drunk. A lot of times that's not so bad, but New York City? <laughs> I just want to give you an idea how difficult my wife can be. She bought me two ties for my birthday. To please her, I wore one. She holler, what's the matter? Don't you like the other one? <laughs> <laughs> the first part of our marriage was very happy. But then on the way back from the ceremony... <laughs> <laughs> My mother-in-law needed a blood transfusion. We had to give up the idea. We couldn't find a tiger. <laughs> My mother-in-law will never live to be as old as she looks. <laughs> Four drunks looked at her, they took the pledge. <laughs> my house, I don't need any long playing records, not with my wife around. <laughs> Say, there was a mix-up in the Swank Fifth Avenue flower shop. The wrong cards were attached to two imposing floral wreaths. The one that went to the druggist moving to a new building read, Deeper Sympathy. The one intended for the funeral of the leading banker read, Good luck in your next location. <laughs> Say, my wife drove up the wrong way in a one-way street. The cop says, didn't you see the arrow? She says, I didn't even see the Indian. <laughs> my wife should have been a lawyer. Every time we have an argument, she feels she's losing. She takes it to the higher court, her mother. <laughs> my wife, I can't forget the first time I met her, the way her lovely hair grew halfway down her back. Too bad it didn't grow on her head. <laughs> see, those bellhops in Miami are just tip-happy. They walk around with their hands outstretched. I was in my room, I ordered a deck of playing cards, the guy made 52 trips. <laughs> <laughs> Down in Miami, a man falls in the pool, the lifeguard jumps in, saves his life. The man walks over to me and says, what do you tip for a thing like that? <laughs> <laughs> Say, one day I was driving under the influence of my wife. <laughs> she talks and talks and talks, she gets 2,000 words to the gallon. <laughs> I want to send my brother-in-law a gift. How do you wrap up a saloon? <laughs> Say, you hear about the gypsy who doesn't read the tea leaves? She reads the lemon. <laughs> and now, folks, it's barbecue time. I'm going to give you some real handy hints now. Your barbecue equipment will not only give you many happy hours of eating, it will save your life if you're ever marooned on a desert island. Now, when this happens, be sure you have your barbecue things with you. 
Start barbecuing immediately. In no time at all, you'll be surrounded by dozens of people all giving you advice. Ask one of them to save you. <laughs> While waiting, I'm going to tell a few gags. There's a man and a woman checking into a hotel near a railroad station. Now, this is the only room left in town. There's a convention going on. And this woman lies down in bed to take a little rest, and all of a sudden, a train goes by, and zoom! It knocks her out of bed, the vibration from the train. Now she lays down again. Another train goes by and knocks her out of bed again. She complains to the manager, what kind of a hotel is this? I'm lying down here trying to take a rest. The train goes by and the vibrations knock me out of bed. He says, I don't believe it. She says, will you please come upstairs? So the manager comes upstairs. She says, lay down that bed a minute. Just then her husband walks in. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> the husband says, what are you doing here? He says, believe it or not, I'm waiting for a train. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys meet. One says, what's the latest dope on Wall Street? He says, my son. <laughs> There's two guys in the gym. One's putting a girdle on. His friend says, since when do you wear a girdle? He says, my wife found it in the glove compartment of my car. <laughs> <laughs> Was it that good? <laughs> Two guys meet. One says, you look bad. What's the matter with you? He said, tell the truth, I lost three wives in the last three months. What happened? The first one died from eating poison mushrooms. What happened to the second one? She died from eating poison mushrooms. What happened to the third one? Fractured skull. How come? She wouldn't eat the poison. <laughs> <laughs> now, folks, summer is normally the time to barbecue because it's cold in the winter. And who wants to stand over a hot fire when it's freezing out? On the other hand, standing with your feet in 10 inches of snow grilling Franks is the best known way to have hot dogs and cold dogs at the same time. <laughs> All right, next joke. <laughs> Says a priest called Father Bob around New York. He's very good to actors. And he was working too hard, and my doctor examined him. He says, look, Father Bob, you're going to get sick yourself. I want you to go away and take a vacation. Take off your priestly attire, put on a business suit, go where they don't know you, and stay away for two weeks and rest. So he comes to Detroit. I'm playing the Playboy Club there. Father Bob sees my name. He comes up to visit me. I sit him down. I buy him dinner. And about five minutes later, a Playboy bunny taps him on my shoulder. Father Bob! He says, where do you know me from? She says, I'm Sister Teresa. We have the same doctor. <laughs> Who would think I just had a physical? I said, Doc, how do I stand? He said, that's what puzzles me. Here's a guy who told his friend he had a pet gorilla that weighed 800 pounds. So his friend says, where does he sleep? The guy says, anywhere he wants to. <laughs> I take my wife everywhere, but she finds a way home. <laughs> my wife has a nice, even disposition, miserable all the time. <laughs> my wife hates housework. I bought electric iron, electric dishwasher, electric dryer. She's a too many gadgets around, she had no place to sit down. What did I do? Bought her electric chair. I bought my wife a mink outfit, a rifle and trap. My wife found a furry who does his own breeding. He crossed a mink and a gorilla. Got a beautiful fur coat, but the sleeves are too long. You people have relatives. I have a grandson named Larry, 10 years old. It's going to be 11 if I let him. <laughs> he keeps complaining about headaches, headaches. I've told him a thousand times, when you get out of bed, it's feet first. <laughs> the guy's brought into a court, and the judge says, you're charged with throwing your wife out of a 17-story window. What do you have to say? The guy said, we used to live on the ground floor. I forgot we moved. <laughs> The man was fined $10 for hitting a pedestrian. He said, Judge, I only have a 20 on me. The judge says, I don't have any change. Go out and hit someone else. <laughs> the guy says, your dog just bit me. The other guy says, that's funny. He's usually very particular. <laughs> says an elderly couple gets married. She was 95, he was 94. They drove to Niagara Falls on their honeymoon. What do you think they did for two weeks? They tried to get out of the car. <laughs> Folks, a lot of people don't know this, but this is a second marriage for me. My first wife fell on the wishing well. I didn't know they worked. <laughs>
All right, I was in a place where they caught the bartender stealing. He took a dollar, put a half a dollar in his pocket. Half a dollar in his pocket and a half a dollar in the cash register. Took in another dollar, same thing, a half a dollar in his pocket, a half a dollar in the cash register. The third dollar, he put the whole dollar in his pocket. The boss walked over and said, what's the matter, aren't we partners anymore? <laughs> The guy comes up to me and says, let me $10 till payday. I said, when is payday? He said, you ought to know, you're the one that's working. <laughs> In the hotel lobby, a guy walks up to me and says, you want to buy a diamond ring? I said, where is it? He said, I'm that guy over there. <laughs> The guy goes to a doctor. He says, look, doc, I have a dime in my ear. The doctor says, what? A dime in your ear? The guy says, yes, it's been there for 10 years. The doctor says, why didn't you have it taken out? The guy says, I didn't need the money. <laughs> the pickpocket is arrested and brought into the court. The judge hands down the sentence, $50 fine. The pickpocket's lawyer confronts with his client. He says to the judge, look, your honor, he doesn't have quite $50 on him. If you give him a few minutes of the crowd... <laughs> That the guy has heart trouble, so he flies in the world's most famous heart specialist. The specialist operates, and it's a fabulous success. The guy is completely healed. He says, Doc, how much do I owe you? The doctor says, that'll be $5,000. The patient gets mad, I can't afford $5,000. I can't pay $2,000. I can't even pay $250. The specialist says, okay, the operation's on me. Tell me one thing, why did you fly me in here from Miami? The guy says, when it comes to my health, money's no object. <laughs> The fellow says to his friend, look at this nice poodle I got for my wife. His friend said, I said that was a pretty good trade. <laughs> Say, a man goes to a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist says, lay on that couch. If you want to talk, talk. If you don't want to talk, you don't have to talk. Man lays around an hour, don't say a word. Walks out the nicest waiting. That'll be $50, please. He pays it to 50 bucks. Since back three weeks later, lays on the couch again for an hour, don't say a word this time. Walks out 50 bucks, he pays it. Comes back the seventh week. He says, Doc, I'd like to say something today. He says, what? He says, need a partner? <laughs> Little old lady walks up to the box office. There's a picture called Dr. Shivago playing. She puts a dollar down. The cashier says it's two and a half dollars. She says, what, is he a specialist? <laughs> To the barbecue, folks. Now, how to build the right kind of fire for barbecuing is important. Besides charcoal and matches, you need a big supply of kindling unless you use an electric fire starter. If you use an electric fire starter, all you need is a big supply of extra fuses. <laughs> if you have no electric starter, all you need besides a large box of kitchen matches and a Boy Scout are four complete copies of the New York or Los Angeles Sunday Times, Chicago Sunday Tribune, or any other Sunday newspaper that gives you a double hernia to lift. <laughs> Besides these, you should have several empty strawberry boxes you can break up, a few ping-pong balls, and all the old celluloid guitar picks you can find in your kid's closet. <laughs> now, folks, always be sure to start your fire well before your guests arrive. If you do this by the time they show up, every briquette of charcoal will turn gray and be ready for you to start cooking. If you don't do this by the time you can start cooking, every one of your guests will turn gray. <laughs> Say, there's two, uh, two boys, uh, I forgot this yoke. <laughs> there's, there's two truck drivers, they're applying for jobs. One says, my name is uh, Sam and this is Nero, he's my partner. When I drive at night, he sleeps. The man says, all right, I'll give you an hour test. Suppose you're driving along three o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden, you see a trailer truck come towards you, you can't get out of the way. What is the first thing you do? He says, I wake up my partner, Nero. He says, why? He never saw a wreck like this before. <laughs> A man can't find a lawyer. He picks up a red book. He sees a law firm. Schwartz, 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 and Schwartz. He calls him and says, I'd like to talk to Mr. Schwartz. Not in today. He's playing golf. He's all right. Then let me talk to Mr. Schwartz. He's no longer with us. He's retired. He's all right. Then let me talk to Mr. Schwartz. He's in Detroit. Won't be back for a month. He's all right. Then let me talk to Mr. Schwartz. He's a speaking. <laughs> The old man gets hit by a car and the cop puts him against the wall and props him up, covers with him in a blanket. 
He says to the old man, are you comfortable? He says, I make a nice living. <laughs> man walks into a doctor. The doctor says, you're going to live to be 60. He says, I am 60. He says, what did I tell you? <laughs> Little lady walks into a doctor, he says, get undressed. He says, lady, that's the ugliest body I have ever seen. She said, that's what my doctor told me. He says, what are you coming to me? I want another doctor's opinion. I think I'll tell a mother-in-law, Joe. I got a mother-in-law so neat, she puts paper under the cuckoo clock. I said to my mother-in-law, my house is your house. Last week she sold it. Well, folks, back in the barbecue. <laughs> now, folks, no matter when you barbecue, it's important to have all the things you'll need close at hand. These in the order you'll need them are charcoal, matches, and unguentine. <laughs> now, because things can go wrong the first time you barbecue, invite only your relatives and your fire insurance agent. <laughs> you better also invite your lawyer to your first barbecue. Everyone will be giving you advice on how to build a fire, how to season the meat, and all the other technical problems. This will start an argument which turns into a fight, and you'll have to sue your best friend. <laughs> now, don't let, law don't let your lawyer taste any of your cookery. He may sue you. <laughs> you know, folks, once I want to become an atheist, they gave it up. They have no holidays. <laughs> that fellow walked up to me and said, I want 50 cents for a drink. So I gave him the 50 cents for a drink, and I followed him. He said, what are you following me for? I said, I want to make sure you don't buy a bowl of soup. 